Hello everyone, this is VGTI, and today I'm going to be reviewing Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. I've been really eager to do this for a long time, and the reason I haven't gotten around to it is plain and simple because MGS5 is such a big game. I've been doing a lot of the side ops, doing a lot of the optional things, just ve like very barely progressing through the story. But just the other day, I beat it, so I am ready to give my review on it, and let me just make it known now that this review will be spoiler free, so you guys don't have to worry about that. I might do a video in the future where I discuss the spoiler topics and the ending and my thoughts on that, but for now this will just be a spoiler free review telling you what I think of the game and is it worth buying, is it a good game. So let's get started. As you guys may know from my last game review where I reviewed Undertale, first I'm going to be starting off by talking about the story, and that's basically the most discussed point of contention with Metal Gear Solid V. We'll move on after the story to gameplay, then graphics, then the music and sound design, followed by the replayability, and then the overall score. So how about the story of Metal Gear Solid V? How is it? And story is a big thing, because Metal Gear Solid is a series that's all about its story. It's all about its characters. Yes, the series is also all about its very well done, highly refined, sneaking gameplay. Um, it's, a, it's largely about that too, but the story and characters are what keeps us coming back for more alongside that. We care about what happens to these characters, and to put it as the trailers put it, Metal Gear Solid V is the missing link in the Metal Gear saga, as they said, because it focuses on a time period in the saga that has not really been touched upon and closes the gap, so to speak. And I will say, after seeing the ending of the game, it does close the gap. There are some questions that it doesn't answer, but it does fill in the space, in some good ways and in some bad ways. And to be honest, I can't really talk much about that without delving into spoiler territory, so I'm going to avoid that. But let's just say, coming from a fellow Metal Gear Solid fan, I can appreciate what was done with the game's story and with the ending, and I understand it and why it was done, but there are some things that are definitely not quite right here. The story is not perfect. And you have to understand that Metal Gear Solid V is a very different experience from every other Metal Gear Solid game to date. Every other Metal Gear Solid game has a much more bigger focus on the story, with lengthy cutscenes, codec conversations, and various optional things, whereas Metal Gear Solid V tones it down a lot. And this could just be because of complaints from people about Metal Gear Solid 4, which was technically the last main entry in the series, but even with games that came after Metal Gear Solid 4 like Peace Walker, those aspects of the story still remained. Metal Gear Solid 5 changes that, and in part it's due to the fact that the game is now open world, which is a first in the Metal Gear Solid series. It's open world, and to accommodate for that, the story is a lot more sparse, because not only is there more stuff to do, but, well, I can't discuss the other reason, so. But yes, it comes about partly due to that, it being an open world game, and also possibly a change of direction in writing for Hideo Kojima himself. But let's just say that the cutscenes are very sparse, and when they come, you really do kind of treasure them. But at the same time, when they do come, they're very short compared to a lot of the cutscenes from the previous games of the series. And not only that, you take notice in how the characters speak, too. Some of the characters were done very well, but characters like Ocelot have almost completely changed in the way they act and talk, and honestly, even after beating the game, I could not see a reason why they did this to some of the characters. For some of them, it makes sense, and for some of them, they really nailed it, like Kaz, for instance. But with people like Ocelot, it, it's a very weird change in tone and pacing, and it just makes you wonder why such a change happened in the first place, you know what I mean? And because of the way the story is in the game and how it's fed to you slowly, bit by bit, a lot of the important 
like topics that need to be discussed and a lot of the important things that happen just kind of quickly go by and they're glossed over and you're just sitting there wondering why like shouldn't something more happen or shouldn't this be questioned things like that I can't really go into specifics but that's kind of how the story is and it it, it really is kind of disappointing because I didn't see anything wrong with how the story was presented in all of the other games. 4 had some issues, but it was still really good. And with this, it's just not good enough. And it's too... too sporadic, I guess is the word. Like, it's not a bad story, and what it does sometimes succeeds very well. But it's definitely not as good as it could be. And it's definitely not on the quality of other Metal Gear Solid games. So I give the story a 7 out of 10. But now we move on to the gameplay. And as I mentioned, the gameplay is now open world, which has never been done before in Metal Gear Solid. Now, I can happily say that unlike the story, the gameplay nailed pretty much everything almost perfectly. However, there are some issues, and I'll get to that in a second. But first, let's cover the positives. I can safely say that Metal Gear Solid 5 has the best gameplay in the entire series. It is simply the most fun Metal Gear Solid game to play, in my opinion. And even now, I'm still really, like, really enjoying it, doing all of the side ops and trying to develop Mother Base. But at the same time, it is a bit repetitive. The way the open world is set up is that there's not really much in the open world, and you go between outpost to outpost. Between the outposts, there's really not much going on except for pretty scenery, but once you get to the outpost, that's where all of the enemies are, you have different entry and exit points, stuff to steal, things to grab, stuff like that. And what it does is it really creates this kind of open world, open-ended stealth. It's pretty much the best stealth the series has had to date because it gives you so much freedom. You have so many tools to work with and so many things that you can do that it's pretty much play how you want. You can play in your own style and it gives you the complete freedom to do that. And because of that, that's why the gameplay is just so fun and probably the best to date in the series. Now when you're not in the open world doing missions and side ops, you'll be on Mother Base. And that's basically your base where you're growing your private army, Diamond Dogs, and you grow it by stealing stuff out in the field. You can Fulton soldiers, their weapons, materials, things like that, all to go towards the development of Mother Base. It will gain new like plant expansions, you'll get more people, new uh, base types and team types, and it's just going to grow in front of your eyes, and it's very cool. I really like the Mother Base building aspect to the game because as it grows, you get more support in the field, and you're able to unlock more cool stuff. Um, Peace Walker had a Mother Base development gameplay feature, but it definitely was not on this scale. That was just kind of the start of it, but MGS5 really perfects it, and I think that's one of the most fun parts about the game, is just seeing your Mother Base grow, and growing your army, becoming more powerful. It's just so fun, and that's part of the fun of playing the game in the first place. And along with that, the controls are just so good, the best the series has had. It's so smooth, easy to use, but like I said, there are problems. It's very repetitive, and after spending like 70 plus hours with this game, there are points where you're just like, I don't want to do this repeat side op over and over again, because a lot of the side ops honestly are just repeats. And eventually it gets to the point where it's really repetitive, and you're not having as much fun as you could be. I think they could have circumvented this in some ways, but they didn't, and a lot of it can get kind of boring at times, and this goes hand in hand with the fact that the story is just so sparse. So I give the gameplay a solid 9 out of 10, with some issues, of course. Now on to the graphics. The graphics pretty much speak for themselves, so I'm not going to dwell on this too long, but pretty much they're some of the best graphics that are out today, right now. Definitely not the best, and some games surpass it, but it's definitely one of the best looking games out now, and it's of course the best looking Metal Gear Solid game there is. It's just such a joy to see how good the Fox engine is, and we saw some of this in a brief glimpse with the now gone PT. So 
Definitely super good graphics. It made every cutscene just so enjoyable to watch with just how detailed the characters are and things like that. So I give the graphics a 9 out of 10, just like the gameplay. Now on to music and sound design, and this part's kind of a mixed bag because there's some good things about it and some bad things about it. The music has some good points. The music made specifically for the game, things like Sins of the Father and Quiet's theme and the various catchy 80s tracks that you can put into your cassette player, those are all great, fantastic stuff, and I always enjoy listening to all of those songs. But at the same time, the standard music for the game, things that play during the cutscenes and the ambient music, it's just kind of bland and forgettable. So there is that. But then with the voice acting, we have the same deal where it's both good and bad because we have some excellent performances by, of course, Kaz's voice actor, Skull Faces. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland does a great job as Big Boss, even though he doesn't speak much. And with Troy Baker, he does a fantastic job as Ocelot and everything, but there is the problem of Ocelot's character in the game himself, and I already touched on this uh, earlier in this review, but just the things that he has to say as Ocelot's character, the writing for Ocelot in this game is just kind of bad, and it's not the Ocelot that we know, and I'm sure you guys will see other videos talking about things like this. Troy Baker is a fantastic voice actor, and he does great work as Ocelot, but he just could have had better lines, and that's not his fault. That's just the writing, you know? There's nothing that can be done about that. So with this mixture of good and bad things with the music and the voice acting, I give the music and sound design an 8.5 out of 10. And now we're on to the final aspect, which is replay value. Is the game fun to replay? Yes, it is, but not in the way that you would think. It's not so much fun in that you go back and start a new game and replay for a different experience or new game plus or anything like that. But the game keeps going after you beat it. Everything that you've done is still as you left it. You can keep going out to the field developing your mother base and there's a lot of things still to do when you beat the game and when you beat certain missions at the end of the game. So there's definitely plenty of room to keep playing, especially with how much you can develop Mother Base and how much things there are still left to do. So with that, I give the replay value a 7.5 out of 10, because not everybody's going to want to do that, but the replay value that is there is really good compared to a lot of games nowadays, because there's still just so much to do even after you beat it. So. That's what I give that. And with that, we have the overall score of the game. I give Metal Gear Solid 5 a 7.5 out of 10. And to sum this up, to sum all of this review up, let me just say this. Metal Gear Solid 5 is a fantastic game, and it's one of my games of the year, which I'll probably tell you guys my games of the year in a future video. But it's definitely one of my games of the year and it's a fantastic game. It does a lot of really good stuff. Even with the Metal Gear Solid franchise itself, it does a lot of really good stuff outside of, you know, how good of a game it is compared to all other games. It does a lot of cool things with the story, and it does so many really amazing things with the gameplay. It's a fantastic game with a fair share of issues, and if you play this as an outsider that doesn't really know much about Metal Gear Solid, it'll probably be easier for you to accept and get into. Now, if you come into it as a diehard fan, which you probably will be, or at least you'll just be, you know, just casually into the series, you're probably going to be a bit confused by some of the decisions made with Metal Gear Solid 5, and some of it you're not going to like. There was quite a bit of it I did not like, especially story-wise, which once again, I'll discuss in a future video. Um, and it's a very different Metal Gear Solid game than any of the other games. It's almost a completely different experience, but that's not always a bad thing. It just is in some ways. It's definitely a mixed bag of a game, but it's definitely also a really good game for what it is. And what it does get right, it nails. So that's why I gave the game the score I did. And just keep that in mind going into it, whether you're a Metal Gear Solid fan or you're not. 
Thanks for watching this video guys. If you like my channel and you like video games, subscribe, like the video, go about your business, and I will see you next time.